Colin Shannon back with you. And uh, today we uh, chat with, uh, I guess he's now the former. No, not yet. Not yet. Come not on. yet. No, not, not quite. Not yet. No, he's got a, He's got a, an, another uh, draft to go through and uh, maybe some free agency. And, and then, he'll right. be, then he becomes like you and me, Bob. He becomes a consultant. Well, uh, and that's what I really wanted to talk about off the top. We are all of an age where, you know, retirement, so to speak, is... Um, has become a reality. And yet what I've found, David, is many of my friends who are in the same position have had a terrible time retiring. And they, I don't know whether they're bored or what. I mean, I was bored. I retired for several months and got bored and then hooked up with John, unfortunately, and, and we're doing this. <laughs> but uh, have you thought about like retirement and what you want to do? Is, is there a plan in place or you just had enough of this? Well, uh, the Poils are planners, so I always have a plan, uh, yeah. but I, I've been told by many people now that this is uh, becoming a reality that do not judge your retirement by what happens in your first six months, because that seems to be the, the rockiest time. Right. I, I guess I'm, uh, I'm, well, I know I'm very, very lucky because I'm going to be an advisor, uh, again, an advisor to Barry Trotz in the Hockey Ops Department, advisor to the ownership, and we have a a new ownership uh, situation come in where Herb Fritch, our majority owner, is selling a team to the former governor, Bill Bill Haslam. So I believe that I can, you know, bring pretty good value to both of them from a you know historical standpoint of all the experiences that I've that I've sure. had, and why things have been done, or you know what what to do in these situations. But again, that's probably you know loosely defined. So you know, you never know if I'm going to really have that opportunity or not. I think I I think I, I will, but. Uh, I, I guess first and foremost, I, I, I believe the most important thing now, if I, I made this decision, is take care of some things, you know, personally. I mean, we all know that when you've had this job for this many years that uh, uh, I've missed some opportunities or some situations at, at home with, with my wife, my kids, and now my my grandkids. And there's certain things that my wife and I want to, to do together. So, you know, I, I think in the immediate future, I, I believe I will be I will be fine. I got a lot of things to do. I'm, I'm like everybody else too, is that uh, I'm sure when I get to play golf regularly, that I'll be much better than I currently am. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we, you know, again, it's my first time of doing this, but uh, I've had a long, long career, a long yeah. career. And uh, it just feels like the right time. So I, I hope I'm, I hope I'm up for it. I hope I, um, uh, I'm not one of those guys that, uh, you know, is having second thoughts uh, about it. So uh, I'm prepared as I can be right now. Yeah, I get so it. You, uh, you never know, though, uh, in, in terms of, you know, how you react once it comes. Do you have any concept of how many hours you want to work as a consultant, you know, with the team? Um, not really. I th uh, the way I, I have my freedom, and in other words, I'm not going to have an office <clears throat> at the Bridgestone Arena. Uh, I can come and go and you know, I just have to be be available when they they need me. As, as I said, it's it's probably loosely defined. I think as we move along here, uh, you know, with my relationship with uh, Barry and what I'm able to do in these last four months in terms of you know passing on uh, way we do things or have done things, and then he can make his decision of how he wants to do things. Uh, you know, for example, uh, uh, meeting with owners on a pretty regular basis because there's a lot going on there. Like um, we have an owners meeting, say for example. Uh, you know, this this week and meeting with Bill Haslam, the new owner, to just you know dot the i's and cross the t's in a lot of a lot of situations. So uh, again, I I don't know the the, the answer to that, but uh, right. you, know, you can't have it you can't have it both ways. I can't have my I can't retire and have my freedom and then then say, geez, you should have used me more, or what what have you. So right. I I'm confident it will work out. So you you call yourself a planner? Does that mean you're a man of routine? Absolutely. Absolutely. All the time. And, and how, how would you describe what, I mean, that to me is the one thing that in the back of my mind would concern me. So how do I, how do I maintain my routine? Um, geez, you guys got all the tough questions right off the top here. I mean, yeah, we, we, uh, we, well, we don't I waste mean, time. I, I, I guess I some, too. Yeah. I think there's some personal, personal things. I mean, just, uh, just say from a uh, standpoint of your, uh, physical fitness and doing things I, I'm pretty I'm pretty good at that right now but I think I can be be better at that and uh, you know not uh, being locked down by a job that 
because consumes at least 12 hours a day, I think I can I can probably work on, on that a little bit more. But again, I think it's more personal things that just we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to go visit our grandchildren, thing, things things like that. We have a place in, in Florida that I certainly am going to use a lot more than I'm using now. I'm, I'm kind of kidding this side because I'm just a very below average golfer, but I think that's uh, a lot of people that we're getting to know down there in the community that we live and I'm looking forward to the, to the social aspect of that, that I've had no real uh, consistent time of, of doing that. So uh, again, I, I got to get there first before, <laughs> before I see how this actually, yeah. actually plays out. So Bob, I don't know if you know, so I, I met David in an ATCO trailer outside the Stampede Corral in 1979 when he was the assistant general manager for the Calgary Flames. Uh, he had been with the, the Atlanta Flames and moved up to Calgary when we all, I think we all moved within about the same five days. <laughs> and so, so we had, a, we, that was the bond of, we didn't know anybody else. So we just, we just talked with, within the hockey community. Um, but you all, you have always talked uh, so well about uh, how Cliff found you and identified you and, and uh, tutored you. Um, once you made your announcement, uh, I'd love to know what your conversation was with Cliff. <laughs> so no, that's the good old days. That was fun time in Calgary. That really, those two years, I only was there for two years. And that really got me going in the right direction in terms of, I would say, recognition in the hockey community and other people, including owners. So I got my job with the Washington Capitals. So, you know, Cliff deserves a uh, so much credit for that. My dad was by my first mentor, and then Cooks clearly was my second mentor. Um, uh, so when I called, <laughs> when I called Cliff, I said, "Well, how is this? How is this going to go?" And he says to me, "He says, well, here's what's going to happen, and this is exactly what's happened." He says, "Everybody's going to call you and send you a note or what have you for the first two or three days, first week." And he says, "Then you'll not hear from anybody ever again." <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's exactly true. <laughs> that, that, by the way, that's the same thing what happens when you get fired, David. <laughs> my wife, my wife calls it. They phone for the bloodletting, <laughs> that's right, exactly. and, then, and then you don't hear from them ever again. <laughs> yeah, I get it. So, but that's exactly what's uh, what's happened. Uh, another mentor I, I called was Harry Sinden, who is, I believe, like ninety years old now. And yeah, as sharp as a tack. The conversations are always really good. Challenged me in a few few league things, what have you. And I asked him like. Uh, what do you, th what, what it was like? And he said, you won't believe the amount of pressure or stress that you've been under, that you will have a, a, a real piano taken off of your, your back. So I'm, I'm waiting for that feeling to kick in. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not there yet.